Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Marquetta Breslin Live. Tonight, I am going to be doing some ventilating and chatting with you. So after the break, I'm going to cut to this screen right here. And I'm going to be working on this test piece. That's why you see those black lines drawn on the list. This is not going to be for anybody to wear. This is just something that I am testing out and I am taking you along the journey with me. So if you are wanting to ventilate along with me, grab your wig block, grab your hair, your ventilating needle, and let's do it. All right, I'll be right back right after this. If you want to broke your business, we will show you how to get it up, get it up. Making deposits to help you start making deposits. We building a team full of winners from novice beginners to moguls with profits. And moguls that's profits. Steady for greatness, we strive. We dropping them gems over here. Tune into my credit, we live. All right, so I am about to get right into it. So you'll see me in the top corner of your screen. While I am here um, getting ready to start ventilating, drop your comment, say hello, and all of that stuff in the chat. And I am just getting ready to get started um, ventilating this piece. Let me put on my glasses how many of you out there wear glasses versus wearing um, uh, readers? I mean, versus wearing the the headpiece. I cannot wear those headpieces like with the lamps and stuff on them. I cannot wear those because they just don't work with me. I don't like them. It's too much on my face. It's too much on my head. It's just a bit much. So tell me i'm very interested in how and somebody please tell me too what's your setup like like do you use what is going on here do you use a um a wig block do you use a tripod what do you use i'm very interested in this so i've never done one of these before normally if i'm ventilating um, I'm teaching or something like that. So I've never worked on a piece like this live. So this is very interesting. I am super duper excited to see how this turns out and how you guys like it. Let me know in the chat. I'm about to come over to the chat in just a second. Um, let me see. Let me see what's going on over here in the chat. Oh, dang. <laughs> Y'all are not playing tonight. Okay, let's see. Hey, girl. Hey, Terry Bright. First of all, shout out to all the inner. Let me take these glasses off because you can really see my lazy eye with these glasses on. I don't know if y'all have ever noticed or not, but I have a legit lazy eye, like for real. <laughs> I have a lazy eye. And it's this one right here. And when I put on these glasses, because these are so magnified, you can really see it. So let me take these glasses off. But what's up, everybody? I didn't even, that was just so rude of me. I didn't even say hello to everybody. So let me just say hello to everybody over in the comments. Um, hey, girl. Hey, Fierce Main, Gigi. Hello. Ranisha, shout out to all Inner Circle members. I just love, love, love you guys. Uh, so shout out to all Inner Circle members. Sherry Anderson, how are you? 
Sherry says, I have the lamp with the magnifier. See, shout out to y'all that can use the lamp with the magnifier. It's just something about that thing that I just can't, I can never, ever find my groove. It's weird. I don't know why. Thank you. You know what? These are actually, these are actually kind of old. It's time for me to get a new set. So this time my nail tech did, um, this time she did gel, well, what is it called? A-press, A-press. And I've never done that before. I always do acrylic. And the first time she did a press on me a few years ago, I didn't like it, but I like these. So I might stick with it. Um, I love the headband. The glasses make my eyes hurt. Interesting. I was just on your page earlier today, Fierce Mane. Just on your page. Glasses are actually progressive lenses, aka trifocals, which are actually, okay, got it. And then readers on top of that. So I'm either wearing regular glasses. I'm in the same club because uh, I'm half regular glasses because I'm half black or wearing readers to really zoom th things in. Hmm. I don't understand the last part, but I understand what you're saying. Kind of. <laughs> uh, beautiful nails. Thank you. Yes. I have to wear something about glasses. Um I use my clamp from Cosmo School. I use a cradle and a tri or a tripod. I do two. I think I may actually, because um, I'm using my tripod right now. I think I may switch over to the cradle later on. Uh, Terry Bright says, I wear readers, glasses. I use my lap. <laughs> Listen, that lap will make that back hurt if you, if you sit there too long. At least for me, it does. Hey, cuz, how are you? Me too. Jason says, I use the goggle for years, but I've switched to 4.5 X reading classes. I'm with you there. I'm with you there. Uh, Pierre says, hello. Glad you are doing this. Yay. So glad. I think you meant so glad you're doing this. Hey, 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 everybody. Hey, Marquette and everybody. Y'all are so sweet. Y'all are so sweet. So I'm about to jump back over here. Oh, thank you. Trying to post all this work I've been doing. Yes, I'm about to, I am about to do it a bunch of students. So I was on my Instagram earlier today and I was wondering why I couldn't, let me cut back over here. I was wondering why I couldn't, um, I wasn't seeing anything that people had been tagging me in. Come to find out I wasn't seeing it because um, they had turned on this auto turned on this feature that made me approve what is happening here that made me approve all of the um, all of the posts. So I had to go in and I had 90 different posts that I had to approve from people that were tagging me and stuff. Now, see, I can tell you already that I do not like this lace and. I like the hair, but I hate this lace. So this lace is like a super thick, dense lace and the holes are su super close together. And man, I don't like that. Well, I'm sure I found my groove. I'm not worried about it. But I tell you one thing, in order for me to be able to get this camera and situation set up this lighting is not ideal so i think for next week so what happened there y'all i just split a knot by accident so i think what i'm gonna do for next week is i am going to go live from my wig lab for next wednesday when i work on this again on live the wig lab is going to be on the green backdrop, I think I'm solidifying all of that this week. So we shall see. But tell me, tell me what's the thing that y'all like the most about ventilating? And what's the thing that you hate the most about this process? Like, I'm very, very interested. I feel like, golly, I feel like because I'm on here and I can't, um, it's very hard for me to, with this hair, my goodness. But 
How many of you, when you first start out, you're like, Jesus, I'm rusty. And then by the time you get a good patch going, you're rocking and you're rolling. See, this happens to me all the time with this super straight, this relaxed texture hair specifically. But even though these, um, these holes are close together, this is still going to come out nice. And that's, that's the beauty of ventilating. It doesn't even matter. In fact, let me just pull this out and show y'all. Because it doesn't even matter. Look at this little tiny section that I did already. And this is on terrible lace. It doesn't even matter. Look how nice it still looks. Look at that. This is going to be really pretty when I, when it's done, even though I'm probably not going to wear this thing. I don't know. We'll see. I do love this hair, though. And look at this movement. I'm not even cross-knotting. I'm just ventilating everything straight back. I just want to see how it looks. I'm looking to see if this, this space and the size of this closure is up to par. That's what I really want to see. And then when I do the next one, I will, it will be with my lace. Man. All right, let me jump over here to the comments and see what y'all are talking about. Oh, okay, let's see. It's heavy. What's heavy? I'm not sure what's heavy. Nicole Hunter says, hey, everybody. Oh, thank you. Still trying to post all this work. Oh, okay. I think I re I'm rereading these. Um, Jason says, I keep meaning to buy a cradle. If a tripod doesn't work, I use the neck airplane pillow. Why are you so innovative? Why do you always think of the best things, Jason? <laughs> always. I use my magnifying ring lamp and I love it. Uh, now I need to get some glasses. Just got a magnifying light. I'm not sure how to feel about it. Yeah, see, it's so it's something about that light that just does not, it just doesn't work for me. Um, this is relaxed textured hair. I love this hair. This hair is is perfect. It's beautiful. It's wonderful to work with. I just hate the lace. Uh, but this is relaxed textured hair actually from Ezra. That's the one thing, man. Our relaxed textured hair is so light and it looks exactly like how your hair would look when you get a relaxer. It's not like some of these relaxed. Dang it. I don't have it with me. I, for hair patches made easy, made a couple patches out of a relaxed textured hair from another um, factory. It was just some hair that I had laying around terrible. It was so silky and you could feel the, um, the synthetic fibers in the hair. It was just, it was not good at all. Me too, Marnie. I have progressive bifocals. Um, uh, Fierce Mane says, I can't wait to receive my lace from the wig patch class. Yes. I am so excited. Yes. Uh, I can't keep my fingers from locking. I think um, hold the hair and tool. I'm I'm a little bit confused on that one. I cannot grasp the concept of cross knotting. So cross knotting is easy. You're simply it's difficult. If I cut back over here, the best way to explain it, which this is not a good way to explain it, because the lighting. Um, the lace is so light up against here, but basically cross knotting, you can really see it good when the lines of the lace are horizontal like this going across. And it's real simple. One row goes this way and the other row goes that way. And then one row goes that way and that way and that way and that way. It's literally like a crisscross. So it's really easy, not hard at all. Um, I can't keep my fingers from locking. I think I'm holding the tool and the hair. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a tension. It's a tension thing for sure. I love when I get into a groove and everything is flowing at will. Nobody in the house to bother me. I understand. <laughs> I understand what that's like. 
Beautiful. Hello, everyone from Charlotte. Uh, let's see. Hey, Marquette and everyone. Hey, good idea. What lace do you recommend for closures and frontals? I always say the best thing to do is just buy a lace sample card because the lace that you're going to use is going to be specific to the client and their needs. So um, buy, always buy a lace sample card from whatever company you're going to be buying lace from if they supply different types of lace. That way you can touch it and feel it and see what works and see what you like and what you don't like. Um, but I like a good old film lace. A coated film lace is really, really nice. Um, you don't really, you, I also, of course, like HD lace and, you know, you can find some that's really, really nice that, that just melts, but you can also find some film lace that's really, really nice and melts into the skin. Uh, I like ventilation cause it's soothing. I'm OCD. So my brain has something to focus on. I don't like when I run out of hair cause I underestimate <laughs> the amount that I need. Oh, I totally understand. Oh, your lamp is heavy. Relaxed texture hair is what I want to work with. It is amazing. Uh, I'm ventilating a five by five closure now. So therapeutic. I love the attention to detail. Yes, 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 yes. She says, zoom in y'all. All right, let me cut back over here. Oops. Oh, let me do this. There we go. That's going to give me a much better much better angle to be able to see. Um, tell me in the comments how what's the different textures of hair that y'all have worked with? Like what do you what do you like to work with? What do you prefer? Has anybody tried working with mohair um, around the edges? I'm very, very interested. So in my um, in my one day, virtual boot camp, I teach an entire section about different types of hair. And I bring out this bin that's filled with different types of animal hair. I mean, like I have an entire industrial size, I feel like that's how big it is, bin of different textures of hair. And I have everything from lions to bears to mohair and go like it's everything. And some of that hair feels like our hair. And some of it feels like it feels super rough, but I get the purposes. It serves different purposes for whatever um, look they're trying to achieve. So I get it. But I teach that section because sometimes we get so caught up in the traditional, everything being so traditional with, oh, you got to use this texture of hair or that texture of hair. And we don't think outside of the box and we don't think past um, what we're currently using. So sometimes it's nice to think outside the box and think about other things. Okay, so I am almost out of hair. And when I run out of hair over here, I'm gonna hop back over in the comments and see what y'all are talking about in the comments. If anybody has questions, listen, this is a perfect time for that too. If anybody has questions about business, questions about whatever, this is the perfect opportunity for Q&A. And by the way, listen, for those that are watching, that's like, dang, I want to learn how to do that. Listen, I have my one day virtual Lace Week Bootcamp coming up December 12th. It's going to be on December 12th, and it's going to be all day from 10 to 3. And you're going to learn how to ventilate. If you don't know how to ventilate, you'll learn how to ventilate. You'll learn about lace wigs. You'll learn about hair, where hair comes from. You'll learn about cross knotting. You'll just learn a ton of stuff, like seriously, a lot of stuff. Um, you also get access to the vendors list. I'm currently working with a couple vendors right now that I'm I'm going to add to the vendors list. One of them is a Vietnamese vendor. I just ordered some samples. I'm waiting for my samples to come before I add him to the list because I want to vet 
um, I want to vet him first and make sure that the hair is up to par before I even think about putting him on that list. Um, so yeah, so all of that for half off is a Black Friday sale. It's normally $99 to enroll and the enrollment right now is only $49.50. That's a steal. It's only going to be available at half price until Black Friday. I uh, know until Cyber Monday. And then the price goes back up to um, $99, which is still, I mean, my goodness, it's still a phenomenal price point, um, even at $99. So listen, if you haven't, this is your opportunity to train with me. And it's my last virtual class of the year, like literally my last virtual class of 2022, this crazy year, y'all. This has been, this year has been insane. The last two years, I don't know about y'all, but my last two, the last two years of my life have been crazy. I ran out of here and forgot to come back over here and talk to y'all. All right, what's going on over here in the comments? Whoa, what is going on over here in the comments? Okay, people that says curly human hair can be straightened and reverted, but to curl straight hair absolutely involves steam. Start curly is easier. I feel you there. Hey, AJ, how are you? Do you have a video on bleaching knots? I don't have a video. Wait, do I? I do not have a video on bleaching knots. Maybe I will do that. Um, I prefer Slavic slash Russian hair for the front. Those strands really make polished in result. You know what? I've seen, oh my goodness. It's so crazy that you mentioned this because the last, probably in the last month, that's been all that's on my timeline. And it is so absolutely gorgeous and beautiful, 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 beautiful. Um, it's so interesting that you mentioned that. I don't think I've ever worked with Russian hair. I don't think I've ever, in fact, I haven't worked with Russian hair, Vietnamese hair. Yes. Um, Indian hair, of course. Um, what other hair types of hair have I worked with? Um, Brazilian hair, well, it was advertised as <laughs> Brazilian hair and Cambodian, but I don't think I've ever worked with Russian hair. I bet it is absolutely stunning. Um, I have succeeded in achieving the single knot, but my knots appear somewhat large. Is there a reason why this is happening? I'd like them to appear smaller. What size needle are you using? Um, it could be the size of needle that you're using, or it could be the amount of hair that you're holding. Well, a lot of people don't realize is that the size of your needle, if you have like a, a three, four oct needle, oct is the size OCT, that needle is designed to pick up three to four hairs. So if you're using a large needle, that might be why your knots are big. And sometimes when people hold a lot of hair and they ventilate, their knots can come out big because they're grabbing a lot of hair when they knot. But I mean, those, those, that's just what I'm guessing. It could be really, it could be a number of different things, but without seeing it, that those would be my first two guesses. Um, I usually vent curly hair. HD coated from Bossy. Yes, yes, yes. HD coated lace is amazing. Instead of holding the tool tightly, try holding it lightly and then giving an extra twist before you pull the hair through. That gives tension without cramping, if that makes sense. It does make sense. And I'm I, I'm going to show you what she's talking about. So look, how long have I been live? For 24 minutes. Um, okay. I think this is what she's talking about. When you get ready to make the knot, that's not a twist, but I think this is what she's talking about. When you come back, pull to tighten, and then pull all the way through. And of course, I snapped the hair because I had it so tight. But let me just pull that through. Oof, come on. There we go. 
So, yeah. I wonder, did y'all see, oh my gosh, did y'all see that video? I posted it a couple months ago. I I don't even think I um, I remixed it, real calls it a remix, or do edit it on um, TikTok, but it was a video of a little boy who was ventilating at literal, like lightning speed. He was going so fast. Did y'all see that video? My hands are not set up that way, but it was amazing. Somebody asked me, um, hold up. Somebody asked me what, um, how to get faster. I, I get asked that question all the time. How do I get faster? How do I get faster? It comes with time. I mean, the more you ventilate, the faster you're going to be. I'll never forget when Gemma came to film the bonus content for Lacewig University. Man, I was watching her. She was filming the hairline section. She was ventilating so fast. I mean, she was just rolling through it. And um, <laughs> meanwhile, it takes me, I'm like a, an old truck or something. It takes me a minute, okay? It takes me a minute to get to gain my speed when I'm working on something. But that's just because um, I don't, I haven't ventilated a lot, especially in this past year with this move and this reno that we did and all of that stuff. So I've kind of taken some time off of ventilating and I can tell, I can tell tremendously because um, I've slowed down a lot. And it's also, um, has a lot to do with your environment, like being able to see, making sure your lighting is good. And so a lot of our lighting and stuff was packed up for a while and our studio wasn't set up and it's still not all the way set the way I want it yet. But here in the next, in the next week or so, everything will be set up and running smoothly. And I'll be in a different studio when I do these wig Wednesdays, whether I'm ventilating or if I'm working on a cap or if I'm working on the industrial machine or whatever it is, it'll be in a different set. So the Marquetta Breslin Lives will either be in the black backdrop studio or it's going to be um, in the wig room. I have to see, make sure. Okay. All right, it's coming along. I hate this lace though. I really dislike this lace. This is crazy. So I remember y'all, I think I, I don't know. I think I shared this story um, in the hair patches made easy course, but I don't know what made me think of this, but I'm about to tell y'all this story. So when I was in India, <laughs> When I was in India, um, we visited this hair factory in Tarupati. Anybody that knows anything about hair in India, they will tell you that Southern India, specifically Tarupati, is like the hair mecca. It's the hair capital. It's where the most temples are located, and it's where the most hair is donated. So... We're driving, so we flew into Chennai, and from Chennai, we took a road trip. It was a two-hour drive. We had um, hired a travel company to take us two hours to Tarupati. Now, originally, we were supposed to... I don't like that strand. Originally, we were supposed to spend the night in Tarupati, and I ended up canceling and just said, well we'll just drive down there and come back. And I don't remember why. I don't remember what made me, what prompted me to cancel, but I am so thankful I did because it was a very small city and the hotel that I had booked was just not up to, um, I mean, it just, it just didn't look, it didn't look good. So I don't like that strand either. Hold on y'all. Let me pull some of these strands out that I don't like. So we're driving into Tarupati and there's a place 
that we have to go through that almost looks like like when you drive from Vegas to California, there's a little um, right at the border. There's like this thing that you have to go through. It's, it almost looks like customs. So we're driving through and they I guess they take a look at the vehicle or whatever. And we stop. And when we stop, <clears throat> these monkeys, like literal actual monkeys came out of nowhere and was like, they were jumping all on the van. And I mean, it was insane. And the driver was like, don't, don't, you know, don't roll down the windows. Don't do. And I'm, I was so terrified y'all. I was scared. I was so scared. And I was, I was telling Rob and Ron, Cause they were with, they were with me. They traveled with me. I was telling Rob and Ron, um, <laughs> I, I was telling them, <laughs> I said, if a monkey comes through the window and gets in this van, I will turn this whole thing upside down. We will be all over national news. I was so scared y'all, but everything was okay. We went through and um, we ended up going into Tarupati. We had, um, we met with the owners of that particular factory, man, that hair was absolutely gorgeous too. It was beautiful, absolutely beautiful, but we ended up having, having a good time and learning a lot there, but I'm telling you that was one of the things. And then there was another, um, there was another little city that we went to in India. Hold on. Oh, people, are, I, 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 I see what you're saying now. I misunderstood what you typed. So there is another city in India called, uh, that we went to, where was it? Kombi tour. And that was where I was invited to preach at Karunya university. So we get there and we stay at um, we stay on campus cause there's a hotel on campus, but it's not set up like our hotels. The hotel was different. So there were, part, it was almost like a motel. So the inside was like open to the outside, if that makes sense. So the inside you can like, when you go into the inside of the hotel to find your room, you're actually outside, but everything is covered. And then you go into, like, you go down the hall and then you go into whatever your room was. Well, as we were walking to our rooms, I looked at our tour guide and I was like, um, so is there anything that we need to be afraid of? Because I, I'm, I don't like to see spiders. Like they, it bothers me to see spiders. So, so he was like, I said, are there any insects or anything like that? He was like, no, you probably won't, probably won't see any insects. But we do sometimes have, um, I think he said tigers. I want to say it was either lions or tigers, whatever, whichever one it was, it was terrifying. He said, they'll just roam around, just, you know, don't, don't move or don't do anything. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what? I was so scared. I was terrified. Nothing happened. I didn't see any crazy animals other than um the monkey that i saw and what else did i see it was the monkey and um oh i almost got chased by a bull so they have these bulls that just walk the streets they just roam like just like we have stray dogs there was a bull so we were in I don't know, I think Vijay Water or somewhere. We flew all over India, all over the middle and southern part of India. We, we were there and we're walking down the street. And of course, I have on all red. I had on a red, thank you. I had on a red um, <laughs> jacket Ooh. and red pants. I actually think I have this on video. And as we're walking down the street, because it was this particular factory, they their buildings were close together and there was no point in driving because you could just walk everywhere. So we're walking down the middle of the street and the guy turns around and he looks at me and he does a double take and he's like, don't move too fast 
but there is a bull. He called it another name behind you. And I don't want you to run. And it was coming. It was walking up to, it was walking up close to me. And I was terrified. We ended up dipping off and going into the building. And then I didn't see it when we came out because it was dark, but it was, it was crazy. We had some, we had, uh, and it was an experience that I will never forget. I'm so ready to go back. I don't know what made me think about think about that. Let me see what y'all got going on. Oh, Lord. I see the spam over here in the comments. Let me see what else is going on over here in, in the comments. Oh, my goodness. Um, okay, let's see. Do you recommend certain knots to be used for the hairline? If so, which one and why? Um, um, single knots. And sometimes, so I think it was last year, I interviewed one of my students um, who had made her first frontal. And um, I asked her, you know, break down the anatomy, tell everybody how you made it, yada, yada, yada. And she shared that she added split knots in the hairline area. Now, let me pause for a moment because somebody, I, I know somebody's thinking, oh my gosh, that's not a good thing to use in the hairline. And I totally understand the logic behind that because a split knot is not a very secure knot. So you can double the split knot. But the purpose of the split knot is to create permanent volume. And some people still use those split knots to create an illusion of um hair that is super vellus in that area and it's because the knot is so tiny and so small so i would say and i did a whole video about how the split knot is underrated but i would still say use single knots but the trick and key to using those single knots is ensuring the actual strand of hair that you're placing on that hairline is thin in diameter. If you look at hair, even my hair, I can I can look at my hair. If I take some of the hair that comes out of the brush, I have some strands of my hair that are thicker than others. You want the thinnest, tiniest diameter of strands to go in that hairline. So sometimes it might take you taking the time to sit there and go through hair and pick out those strands and put them to the side. And then that's what you would put in the hairline area. Great, great question. Uh, let's see. April says, yes, I saw it. Uh, da, 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 da. So, <laughs> uh, I was asking for the link to the Black Friday special. You didn't have a link and I messaged you. When did you message me? And I'm sorry, I didn't see a message. Um, hold on, here's the link right here. Marquetabreson.com slash bootcamp. You don't need any type of coupon code or anything like that. Um, let's see. Hey, if Bell, I haven't seen you on here in a long time. Thank you, thank you, Jason. All right, I'm gonna go back at it, y'all. What materials will we need to start? So, here's the thing: you are more than welcome to to watch. You don't have to follow along, but if you do want to follow along, um, there is a list of tools that you need, but basically all you're going to need is um, a wig block. You're going to need some lace. You're going to need some hair. You're going to need some straight pins and you're going to need a ventilating needle uh, and a needle holder. If you're not using the bamboo holder, there is an option to purchase the a toolkit when you get ready to uh, register for the class, um, you would be purchasing that toolkit well enough in advance for it to ship out really tomorrow. 
um, and you would get it before the class. If not, there's a list of everything you need for the class. As soon as you enroll, that list is right there and there's links to go and buy everything. They're not affiliate links. Um, they're just regular old links for you to go and buy the materials that you need. The reason why I say you don't have to follow along is because if you choose not to, you get lifetime access into this class. I don't, I don't take access away if you don't, um, if you don't use it. So you have lifetime access. And another thing that I'm doing for everybody who enrolls in um, this upcoming virtual class. For those of you who have not um, enrolled in Lacewood University before, I'm giving you credit for what you pay for the class towards Lacewood University. And that, oh, I cannot wait. That goes live uh, January 25th of 2023. I just took some insane pictures today for something special that we're doing um, during that launch that is going to, I'm trying not to spill too much tea, uh, but I'm doing something special with that launch that's going to involve something big in Las Vegas. I'll just leave it at that. So I'm real excited, real excited about that. Uh, <laughs> Sandy Rose, if y'all knew how close we were to going live with Ezra. Oh my gosh. We are so close. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think we'll have any cradles available once we go live because we have so many people on the wait list. Um, there's more people on the wait list than there are cradles. So we may actually sell out before. I mean, it's basically already sold out, but I'm being optimistic um, and holding on to maybe we'll have a couple left, but I mean, we will probably most likely sell completely out. All right. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I'm so excited y'all for to end 2022 and to go into 2023. Um, man, can y'all believe, I feel like, first of all, I feel like we live in a movie. I feel like um, right now we are currently in the middle of a movie and this is about to be the next, the, the, the next scene is going to be this next presidential election. But I mean, having lived through what we just went through in the past two years is insane to me. Like, it's crazy. We <laughs> literally went through a pandemic. We couldn't leave our homes. We were quarantined. Like what in the world is happening? <laughs> this is insane. It's insane. And then having had COVID, I'm sure some of you that are on here right now have had COVID. And if you have first, oh, let me put on my glasses. Who am I fooling? Knowing good and well, I can't see. All right. Um, I mean, my goodness, for those people that have had COVID and, and uh, the families that dealt with loved ones that lost their lives to COVID. And it's just, it's been a lot. It has been a lot. And I don't think people have really dealt with all of the there's a lot that goes with that. I don't think some people really understand what we're we're living through. And I don't think some of us will get it until, <laughs> until it's been years and you sit back and you think like, what just happened? Like, did we just, <laughs> we just survived crazy, crazy times. It's insane to me what we've been through. And sometimes I think um, I was telling my husband, like, man, we just we just go like as women, we sometimes just roll and we don't even like we don't even stop to breathe or stop to think or stop to do anything. And I was telling my husband this was last year, like it was 
last year was an it was a crazy year. That was the the year that I had spent my 42nd birthday in ICU with COVID. And I remember, I think it was the second day that I was there. I was on the phone with my brother. I think it was my brother, or I may have been on three-way with my dad and brothers. And they had to get off the phone with me because I couldn't even, I couldn't finish a sentence I could because I couldn't breathe. And I went through that whole ordeal being in an ICU for five days, coming home, um, recovering. I did a three-day live event a couple of weeks later and then temporarily moved to California, came back about three months later. And at the end of last year, put an offer on a house. And then this year we went directly, excuse me, into remodeling that house along with everything else that we're do we were doing like in on the business side of things. And I don't know when I breathe, <laughs> but I think that when you're doing what you love, it doesn't like none of it. It doesn't phase you at that level. Like I actually, I really and truly love this. I love the people. I love, I love everything about the beauty industry and um, about this wig making community. It's just amazing to me that I get to do something that I absolutely love every day and help people. Like that's really what it's all about. And that's really what keeps me going. That's what keeps me um, motivated. And then of course, seeing all, all y'all's beautiful faces getting tagged in all of the posts and all of that stuff, man, that stuff never gets old. That's why I can't wait for um, my event next year. I have a three-day live event for students of Lacewig University here in Vegas, back at Sunset Station, because I'm not going back to that other place. Uh, I'm going to be right there at Sunset Station. Um, and it's going to be awesome. It's going to be amazing. I'm just really, really, really excited. All right. I think I'm going to wrap this up for tonight and call it quits. Oh, could y'all even see what I was? Oh, okay, you could see. All right, I just want to make sure. Okay, y'all, let me see what's going on over here in the comments. I took your class years ago, I think, in Carolina. Yes, I thought you looked familiar. I had to find the pics, but I did terrible in the class. No. And I have to retry it. I still have my kit from before. If you still have your kit, you don't even need one. If you still have everything, you're good to go. Wow. If you if you can, if you can, if you have pictures of those old DVDs, please send them to me. I have none of them. I don't have any of my old DVDs. I think during one of the liquidation sales, we literally sold them all. And I kept none for myself. So I don't have any of them. And so if you have them, please send me a picture. I would love that. Um, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. She had a nasty bout with bronchitis and she's still, um, she's still recovering, but she feels a lot better, but it was, it wasn't, it wasn't cool. Amazing. Thank you. I have a lot of them, man. That's so cool. Thank you. <laughs> Yep, I do. I have to, because I got to see, like, I want to see, I need to see the work that I've done. I need to make sure that it looks halfway decent. And this is with, with bad lace. Like this is, it's still beautiful. It's still really pretty. But with this lace, it's going to take me, it's going to take me a while to fill this area in. But by the time we get together next Wednesday for the next week, Wednesday, I probably have I don't know. I'm going to try to have all of this done. We'll see. We're just going to see what it looks like. I don't know. I do like the way the knots and stuff look, though, but um, we'll see. We shall see. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me tonight. I got to go grab some dinner. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see what's going on over here. 
Uh, I wish I could ventilate fast with human hair as I could with synthetic hair. Interesting. Interesting. What do you think it is? So are you using water or anything like that? I I can't remember. It is very hot in here. Like, what is happening? Somebody has turned on the heat. Oh, my gosh. Um, hold on, y'all. Let me adjust to turn on this air. It is so hot. Yeah, because it's 80 degrees. Jesus. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Forgive me, y'all. It's hot. Um, I wish I could have that. Oh, are you using water or anything like that when you ventilate? Like, are you dipping the hair in water? Are you using vinegar? Anything when you work with human hair? Some people put uh, just a cap, like not even a cap. They put a little bit of vinegar and water to help control the hair. This is um, um, Simply Lemonade, y'all, in my red cup. Have y'all ever tried the Simply Lemonade? I'm sure y'all have. I don't know why it's so good. I'm like addicted to it. I absolutely love Simply Lemonade and I could drink it every single day. Mm. And it's made with real sugar. That's what I like about it. All right. I'll send them a Facebook messenger. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is 100% density actually single hair ventilated to one hole? I never understood the man. Tell me about it. So that is my, um, that's my thought process. That's what I'm trying to say. That's my thought process of what 100% density is. Um, you would think that it's one hair in every single hole, but if you think about it, and if I were to use, like, let's say that this was um, a lace with bigger holes, like a base lace or some sort of opera lace that had bigger holes, and I put one hair in every hole, that's not going to be as dense as something like this because the holes are closer together. So in order to get that uh, something with a lace with bigger holes in order to get that to 100% density, you would have to go up a needle size to put more hair in each hole in order to get that density. So I never, I'm with you. I didn't like, I don't like the concept of the densities. I understand why they did it because it makes it easier for people to understand, but what's a 100% density for one company may be something completely different for another one. That's why I always say to my students to create your density charts, because especially if you're using different lace, because if I cut back to this lace, y'all look at, so where I colored, um, I took a black marker and went along the back edge. Look how close together those holes are that, I mean, Jesus, look at that. This, and this is one to two hairs. Sometimes maybe it's, I don't think it's three at all. This is one to two hairs in every hole and it's pretty dense, but I have to, I have to make it dense to be able to cover that weft all the way on the sides. But I also like thick hair. So that's why I'm doing this one like this, but yeah, I mean, I don't like the percentages either, but I think it's different for the type of hair you're using and the type of lace, because if this, if this hair that I'm um, using right now, if this was a, a kinky curly wig, I would not use nearly as much hair. Like I would, I would skip holes because curly hair gets far more dense a lot quicker than straighter hair does or straight hair or fine strands of hair so it's one of those weird things um thank you thank you there is an untapped industry within the reborn doll community that involves micro rooting on realistic newborn dolls just something to think about 
this is so crazy. It's so crazy you mentioned this. So um, I am getting ready to start rolling out these different types of content. And there, um, I don't remember how many topics I have, but they've already been researched. The shows are planned out and everything, but I just have to um, get my studio set so I can film them. One of the topics is baby doll wigs. And I talk about this <laughs> in that video. It's very interesting that you mentioned that because um, I literally just went over that um, and going through all of that research. So you're on point. You're on point. Uh, Pierre, I have such a hard time with synthetic. We need to train. <laughs> yes. Uh, Pierre says, I do it the same way. I can do synthetic hair three times faster. That is insane. No water or vinegar, but I will try it. Thank you for the tip. You're welcome. I would just try water first. I, I don't use the vinegar, um, but I would try water first. I know water does help. And um, some wig makers, y'all might get disgusted by this, but some wig makers chew the hair. So they will literally put the hair in their mouths like the little loop and chew it a little bit before they ventilate because there's enzymes in our saliva that breaks down something within the hair um, and makes it easier to ventilate. Me personally, I don't want to do that. Okay. So I don't do that. I think water works just the same, probably a little bit different, but I'm not putting hair in my mouth. Um, yeah. Right. Isn't it good? It's so good. I don't like the ones with like the strawberries and all of that stuff in it, but I do like the lime, the limeade and the lemonade. It's my favorite. Um, that's why I ventilate with curly hair. You don't have to use water for grip because it's curly and it's automatically makes the loop for you off topic, but your wall reminds me of lace. You caught on. <laughs> so when, well, you can't see it here. So there was two different ones. So this was actually a plain white wall. And I went into the tile store here in Vegas and they had these different, this is called penny tile. But they had some that looked like tiny little hexagons. And I was going to do that first. But instead, I went with the black penny wall. And some of them are shiny and some of them are matte. And it came out really, really nice. Um, we just took it up the whole wall. So floor to ceiling, this whole wall is just pennies, penny wall, penny tile. And then in this um, area, I have these sound thingies. I have a video somewhere on, um, I think it's on Instagram, but showing you my, what are they called? Sound barrier thing? I don't know the correct terminology, but it deadens the sound in here so that my mic doesn't sound hollow like I'm in a, a crazy, like big, huge room. It deadens the white noise so it sounds more rich. And then also, I don't have um, my lavalier mic anymore. I have a boom mic that sits literally right here so that my hands can be free Nothing is battery operated. All of our cameras are plugged into uh, power so we don't have to change out batteries or anything like that. And I can produce produce my whole show by myself because I have two cameras. I have this camera right here and then I have this camera and eventually I'll get a third camera that'll show the whole set once we're done setting everything up. Now, do y'all see... <laughs> my life has been like, oh man. Uh, Jason, as well, you have the opposite speed problem that I have. Too funny. Uh, I actually prefer a few shirts and home for density. I love your nails also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other stretches, exercises you recommend to keep your hands and bodies from getting? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, my watch reminds me every 10 minutes or however many minutes, what is it like every hour or so to stand up? If I'm ventilating, I actually listen to the watch. Otherwise, I just sit here sometimes and I work. But 
Um, I have an active release chiropractor that gave me stretches. So the first thing that I do is I take my hand and I stretch it out and I pull back like this. And then I take my thumb because I have been um, dealing with, I'm trying to choose my words wisely, carpal tunnel. So my hand will go numb if I don't stretch. So I take my thumbs and I pull them back and then I make sure to pull this back. And then I do all kinds of arm stretches and neck stretches. And I, I have to get up and I got to move my body around and I can't go for longer than 45 minutes straight or else uh, I'm going to be like this. <laughs> I'll be so tight the next morning. And if I'm working on a big project, I do use massage therapy. Like I have a therapist that comes to the house or I'll go to massage envy. If I have a therapist that I like and I have them strip my arm, they call it stripping. So it hurts. It's very painful if they do it right. And sometimes I'll have my Cairo, uh, my Cairo guy cup my arm, especially if it gets really, really bad, he'll cup it. And that's not comfortable but it works a lot. You have to take care of your body or it's just not going to be good if you don't. Um, all right, let me see. See, the moment I said I was going to get off, y'all started talking to me a lot. No, I'm just kidding. I don't mind it at all. What kind of lace are you using for that? It's just the lace that's from the manufacturer. So it is um, lace that was made in Asia. And it's definitely not my favorite. It has, if I were to put my finger under here, which I don't have this pinned down super tight. So let me see if I can slide my finger in there so y'all can see. Nope. Let me see. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Oh, maybe. Yeah, you can kind of see. So if I cut here, you can't really tell, but. It's super, it has like a, this grayish tint to it that is not at all flattering to my skin. I just don't like it. And I wouldn't want to, um, I would never sell that to anybody. Um, it's just not up to par. Um, oh my gosh, it's so awesome currently. Learning to make reborn. <laughs> That's so awesome. Um, we should start this. We should standardize this density thing. That's what the American Wig Association is for. Yes. How about 100% is one hair in every hole of lace with hole size of 46 holes, centimeters squared. Done. You know what? I was, <laughs> Jason, it's crazy how much we think alike. Because I was just sitting the other day and I was looking at these different lace in the lace sample booklet. And I was just saying, like, why isn't density determined by? So the definition of density in the cosmetology book is number of hairs per square inch. So for lace, it should be, like you said, the number of holes in the lace per square inch to determine what density is. It can get super scientific. We should talk about that. That's what the American Wig Association is for, to standardize things and to connect people who need wigs with people who provide them, whether you make them or not. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, you understand carpal tunnel. Dealt with that for 15 years. Now my fingers are locking up. Well, I pray that your fingers be loosed in the name of Jesus and that your hands be supernaturally healed in Jesus name. Uh, did you whip stitch the lace? No, this lace. So this piece came like this already. So it was already together. So I have three of them. So I am going to work with this one the way it is. The next one, I'm going to remove their lace and replace it with my lace and do a little a little tweaking to it. And then the third one, I don't know what I'm gonna do with the third one. I may 
um, use my hair injection machine for the third one with, um, there's a new technique. I don't even know if I want to share this yet because I don't even know if I'm ever going to, to talk about it deep or, or teach it, but there's a new technique for using the hair injection machine with lace. Um, I know it sounds weird, but I've seen it done and I was completely blown away. So I'm thinking about doing that for the third wig that I have like this, just to see what the end result is. And then put a silk top or silk bottom underneath and pull the hair through. I don't know what it's going to look like, but I would like to, I would like to play around with that. I don't know. I'll do it on a wig Wednesday though. Um, if I decide to do it. Oh, the lace you gave us from class years ago. Crazy. That's insane. Woo. Wow. 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 Y'all are just so amazing. I can sit here all night and talk about wigs and ventilating, but I am going to sign off now. Make sure you go to my quarterbrazen.com slash bootcamp to enroll in my upcoming class called the one day lace wig boot camp. Where is, oh, here we go, right here. Boom. There it is, right there. And there is the link down below. For those of you who are interested, there it is, right there, the American Wig Association. In order to join the American Wig Association, you just need to make or provide wigs for people who need them. This is the website right here. And this is everything you get when you become a member. It's only $99 to join. And it is a place where people who need wigs can be connected with people who make them. All right. I am super excited for all of this new content and all of these new things that are coming. Um, it's a lot. I can't wait to announce everything to you guys. Um, but just stay tuned in to these lives. Stay tuned in to my email and all social media. Make sure you are plugged in because there is a lot coming. Stuff that I've never done before. Um, stuff that I've done before that I'm bringing back. It's just a lot. And I cannot wait to roll everything out. <sighs> and then I can breathe. So God bless you all. Have an amazing night. I love you guys. And I'll talk to you soon.